Hi everyone, I wanted to go quickly over some uh, uh, Kira ch tips and tricks I used to uh, take my speedboat uh, speed down from 5.38, 5 minutes and 38 seconds to what is now about 4 minutes and 40 seconds. So like a minute of uh, savings, 15% reduction, basically for free, just off slice or tweaks. Okay, so what have we got here? I have this uh, profile that is already configured according to uh, speedboat race regulations. That means uh, 0.5mm line width, 0.25mm layers, uh, two walls, 10% infill, uh, three top and bottom layers, and uh, com combined infill. Now, in Kiura, uh, you do that by uh, just changing the infill layer thickness to double that of the regular layer so if la my our, our layers are 0 0.25 so I change it to 0 0.5 and as you can see Cure now combines the layers okay so running it through the clipper estimator this profile currently gets us 5 minutes and 38 seconds right which is it's it's pretty good right it's uh, using 40,000 acceleration, uh, 80 square corner velocity. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. 5 minutes 38 is very good. But we can go faster than that even without uh, increasing the accelerations or stresses on the printer. So I wanted to go over uh, the main things that helped me. I'm, I think I'm forgetting some stuff. There's There are definitely a few uh, settings that uh, slip through the cracks, but uh, these are the major ones. All right, so the first th setting I want to go over is the experimental section. It's called slicing tolerance. Uh, the default is middle. Basically, it uh, changes the way the slicing behavior works. Uh, usually, Cura slices in a way such as, as you can see, the layers, since the extrusion itself isn't, it isn't perfectly square, you can choose, uh, if, as you can see here, you can choose where the, the layer will go. Right, so when you slice a height level, you can choose if the uh, extrusion will go over, uh, will go uh, middle, which means uh, partially over, partially under, inclusive, which means you over extrude, me that means you're building a, a larger model generally, or exclusive, which means, as you can see, that the tips of the extrusion reach the outside. Uh, the exclusive slicing tolerance basically. Uh, slightly changes the way the slicing works and uh, nets you a slightly uh, speedier prints. So if we activate it now, we can save the file and we'll run it through the clipper estimator. Yeah, there we go. We just saved eight se seconds basically for free. Okay, next setting I wanted to go over with, over, with. Okay, next setting I wanted to go over is uh, the combing. So by default, Cura activates your co combing, not on outer surface, uh, not in skin, whatever. Uh, combing basically edits your uh, movement paths as you can see. It basically means that instead of uh, the nozzle, when you're traveling, instead of the nozzle cutting through the part just at, in the nearest line, it'll go out of its way to only travel in the infill. This means you won't see any scarring on the surface, but that means slower travels. So we're going to turn that off for us, uh, and then we'll re-slice and see how well that changes. That change. Uh, sorry if I misspeak a bit. English is not my first language. Uh, okay, so as we can see, we have 5 minutes 20 compared to 5 minutes uh, 30. We saved 10 seconds just on that. Uh, in a speed bench, you, you won't really see a difference in quality because everything else is uh, already jacked up anyway. Okay, next change I want to go over is uh, the maximum resolution uh, and deviation. I misspelled maximum. Resolution. Okay, so basically by default, you every uh, G code uh, line is a is a set length with the maximum resolution of it. So, for example, you can see the uh, curved wall here isn't really curved. If you if you try and look super hard, you could see jagged edges, right? So the resolution, basically, as you can see here, is the maximum resolution of the movement line. So 
this is a tiny resolution means uh, maximum the every segment of g-code will be like 0 0.2 millimeters and this is much bigger this is like I guess three millimeters in their example but anyway we want to find something that doesn't look completely hideous uh, but is still serviceable what I ended up using is if you can see here I'll switch it to material color right if you can see here the edges and everything and let's switch it to 0 0.8 for the resolution travel resolution and deviation 0 0.25 and you can see that it definitely smushes out some things. These uh, lines are worse. The tip of here, the tip tip of the ship is a bit smushed. Uh, these lines get a bit of a pass, and this one gets a bit jagged. But generally, it still looks pretty good. And we uh, and if we'll uh, run it through the analyzer right now, let's save it. Uh, we had five minutes twenty. This is five five minutes ten. So by shortening these movements, we saved a very large amount of time uh, too. That's another uh, thing we need to do. Uh, next up is uh, I, I equalized my movement speeds. Now this isn't necessarily a speed benching uh, thing th but the guy generally you want to go uh, faster for travels and infill and slower for outer and inner walls because in most parts you're gonna see the in the outer wall and the inner wall is its backing and you're not gonna see infold you're not gonna see travels so you can do them as fast as you like the problem is when you push the printers so uh, quickly is that these changes uh, introduce a lot of acceleration and deceleration so while it might look uh, good that these are all at uh, 350, 320, uh, 450. What I ended up uh, having with these speeds is way more uh, z motor skipping compared to what I ended up using, which is a set speed of 360 millimeters per second for everything. Now, I'm not sure if this exactly saved time. It just mostly increased the uh, success rate. Uh, so I managed to push it, yeah, I managed to push it a bit faster than I could before uh, while increasing the success rate. I could probably go to up to like 370, but it's really not worth it uh, pushing uh, the speeds right now from that direction. Next up, there's a thing in Cura called small features and uh, small features and uh, bridging settings. So basically, Cura will print bridges. So, okay, I'll change it to line type. Yeah, Cura will, will print bridges. So it's these first layers and uh, small features, which are tiny usually. I don't think, I'm not sure if anything on a Benchy even makes it to that size. But it also uh, changed the speed for small features. Basically, this is to keep uh, small features which are tiny and require delicate movement from smushing and br bridging, uh, uh, which requires slower speeds to be good. But as we're speedboating, we really don't need these things. So in the experimental section, you can switch off uh, uh, bridge settings, change the max uh, hole size to zero, and 100% small feature speed. Now, this isn't really a massive save as far as I remember but it is a worthy one either way. Yeah, that's a half second shave. Uh, and it's it made a larger difference uh, originally, but after uh, a lot of tuning, it isn't really a big one. Uh, next up, uh, don't, fill, don't print thin walls and don't fill gaps. So usually uh, when there are gaps in your model, let's say, I'll sort of speed, let's say this one, this is a thin wall, I think, but or here, yeah, you can see this here, I think. Uh, there are gaps between the walls here, and these gaps Cura automatically fills with a different uh, speed than uh, other uh, parts, but it, it does fill them, and that takes time and doesn't really, and isn't really necessary to the outside uh, of the boat. So we can switch off fill gaps between walls, which is in the wall section. I like searching for stuff, by the way. It's more, uh, it, I like it doing it so yeah uh, and we can uh, do a and we can do thin walls 
yeah it, and we can tick off the print thin walls and as we can see this is gonna yeah this is shaved off first of all it equalized my speed uh, so now yeah but as you can see for example in here there is no wall inside now it's not really good for quality but it is it is good for speed like these gaps here are much less filled yeah uh, so we turn that off let's see the speed savings or the speed increase 459 that's an 8 second difference uh, which is pretty large when we get down to these resolutions okay next up I don't know if anyone else does this it's called skin removal width so basically as you can see in this area shows a good example of it these two uh, maybe something that looks slightly less bad all right uh, so basically as you can see here I'll show it here uh, the printer or no you can see it you can see it here there's a thing called skin removal width which means if there's a yeah if there is an area that is if there's an area that's supposed to have a very small amount of skin on it like let's say this bit right here uh, and right now it's set to un under one millimeter it will remove it and replace it with infill right so it's a bit hard to explain so let's just see the change from one to two millimeters right and boom you can see now instead of here there being uh, multiple top layers and multiple stuff it it just prints it just prints info and that's much faster same here and that allows for much greater speeds so yeah let's save this and run it 451 which is another eight second uh, saving all right next up is concentric top and bottom layers so this won't work for all profiles and all combinations of settings but generally from my uh, for my setup I switch my top slash bottom pattern from lines to concentric what this basically does is instead of uh, printing usually you see zigzaggy lines like you can see here on top and the bottom of prints it changes the uh, two of the layers to be concentric so that means this mess uh, it looks fine actually after you print it I don't know if it's uh, the same for all setups but in my case it it usually comes out much faster so in this case it gives you 11 seconds of saving it's pretty uh, it's a pretty large difference. I think it has something to do with the uh, resolution and deviation because the concentric one uses a lot of small steps. But yeah. Okay, this is it for my profile as it is, as it was used. But there are still some uh, changes I did afterwards that haven't been sub submitted into an official run yet, mostly because I'm still testing them. So right now we have 4 minutes and 40 seconds. Now, what I want to go is we have 10% 10, 10, uh, info density, but we can change the info pattern. Right now, it's set to lines, which is which is its lines. But what I found is that there's concentric info. Now, it's it's a bit scuffed. If you can see, what it basically does is add layers in the center. Yeah, but it's it's a bit it's not very smart though. That's the problem. So you can see it just started printing midair that's a bit of a problem in this case it works meh it doesn't work really well which is why I didn't use it for my uh, official print because it was just stooping too low for me but that does provide a lot of uh, time savings so we'll run it again we had 4 minutes 40 this alone took it to 422 it's an it's eight, 18 seconds of saving which is a lot uh, when you uh, go look at speed benches. Yeah, I think that's basically it uh, for my uh, Kira profile. If there are any major things you guys know of that I missed, feel free to leave a comment. Tell me, I'll be looking at the comments 
uh, I think, if I remember, and I'll be reading them and responding. But yeah, that's generally it. Uh, see you guys later, and happy printing.